Hello, you might have noticed that there's been a bit of a gap in videos. That's due to the fact that I've been traveling basically nonstop since April, and that was capped off with a rather intense bout of the flu. So fortunately, both of these conditions has now subsided, and I will be putting out a number of new videos very shortly. I wanted to take the opportunity to respond to some of the many comments I've received relating to one of the first videos that I put on this channel, a video called How to Approach Contemporary Music Explained in 10 Minutes. So when I did that video, I had maybe a couple of hundred subscribers or something like that, and I absolutely was in no way prepared for the amount of attention that it got. So it's been viewed about 10,000 times, and it's been commented upon hundreds of times on multiple different social media platforms. So I'm very pleased that it caused such a lively debate to occur, and I'd like to respond to a couple of points. So the first point is this. In my view, there is a fundamental paradox that anyone who would engage seriously with contemporary music must face, which is the fact that the category of the new, the category of the contemporary, is in and of itself of absolutely undeniable value. So that is an axiomatic belief that I hold. However, there is a disparity between this belief in the category of the new and the actual value of individual works of music. I'd like to relate a personal anecdote to that, which is that in my professional life as a composer, I hear many dozens, probably hundreds of new works every single year. And of those new works, if I were being generous, I would say that probably between 5 and 10% of them are things that I would actually want to hear a second time, which is not necessarily an indication that these works are bad. It's simply an indication that, for whatever reason, I'm not interested in hearing them a second time. I don't feel that they have the depth or they don't interest me enough to make me want to hear them again. And I've spoken with a number of colleagues about this, and they've all said something similar, which is that probably about 90% of contemporary music, if not more, is of very little interest to them. So we all have a similar percentage, but of course it'll be different works for different people, depending on our temperaments and our characters and the things that we think are important. So the question is, if that's the case for a professional musician, someone who spends their entire life dealing with music and contemporary music particularly, and they find that 90% of this production of, of contemporary music is something that they don't want to engage with, where does that leave the non-specialist listener? How do you deal with a situation like this, if you're, especially if you're coming at this music for the first time? So there's a couple of things that I'd like to say about that. The first is that in order to navigate through this pandemonium of different voices competing for your attention, you need to have a critical sense. And a critical sense is a very different thing from simply having an opinion on a particular work. So in other words, you need to go beyond the stage of I like this or I don't like this or this is beautiful or this is not beautiful in order to broaden your musical culture. So when I say critical sense, I mean that you need to consider listening to a broad spectrum of different types of music. So the term contemporary music itself is not really a meaningful category besides, I suppose, the fact that it involves works that are written recently. Um, but from an aesthetic point of view, it's, it's not a category because it's, it's simply too vast and it's too diverse. So under the umbrella term of contemporary music, you have extraordinarily different works that have absolutely nothing to do with each other. So to approach this sort of terrain, you need to have some sense of what some of the, the, the broad areas are that are being investigated in contemporary music. So that's where the critic steps in. So ideally, a critic is somebody who can take individual works, take them apart a little bit, show you what's going on in them, how they're put together, what it is they're trying to do, and then the listener, armed with this knowledge, can approach the works and form an opinion themselves. Unfortunately, that's rarely what actually happens, because a lot of music critics simply come out and they do two things. They compare the piece of music to other things that they've heard already, either favorably or unfavorably, and usually they give an opinion as to what they personally feel about that piece, if they like it or if they don't like it. And really that's of extremely little help to us in terms of coming to grips with what it actually is. One thing that you might bear in mind if you're facing this barrage of new pieces that you don't know how to evaluate would be, imagine that you were somehow magically transported back into the Baroque period, that 
somehow you were able to listen to, let's say, an average concert, the odds are that the music would not be very interesting and that you would be bored out of your skull. The fact is that out of the vast production of trio sonatas and cantatas and sinfonias and concertos and so on that were produced during the Baroque, we have retained only a tiny sliver of them. And of this tiny portion of what was actually written during that period, we have had to spend centuries in terms of putting together a critical apparatus, evaluating the works, sorting them out, producing authoritative editions of each of the pieces, which in itself is an extremely lengthy process, developing performance traditions across multiple generations. These things take centuries to come together. So what you end up with over this very, very long process of critical evaluation of performance and of sorting out the good from the bad is you end up with a very small select repertoire, which is performed magnificently. But that takes centuries to come about. So in in the last hundred years or so, that process has probably speeded up somewhat thanks to the, the record, the increased interest in music criticism. I mean, the, the idea of music criticism per se is actually quite recent. It came about really towards the middle of the 19th century. And so all of these things have, have sped up somewhat our ability to process and to evaluate new works of musical art. However, it's still a process that is ongoing. And so if you bring yourself back into the present day, then you realize that this process has not yet been undertaken. So what you're left with is a, a completely unsifted through mass of works, many of which are bad, some of which are good. And what are you supposed to do with this when you're encountering them for the first time? Well, what I would say is once your critical sense has developed, in other words, once you've listened to enough representative new pieces that are of a certain level of quality, then you can start to sift through these things and you'll get better and better at it the more you listen. So to resume, the category of the new is of absolutely unquestionable value as far as I'm concerned. Individual works are not. So you need to approach this in that spirit. Incidentally, the quality of newness is a very interesting quality because it's not simply tied up with chronometric time and our proximity to the creation of a given work. It's a very interesting thing. If you, if you look across the history of music, there are certain pieces that have a kind of indelible newness about them. In other words, each time you hear them again, you're struck by the force of their invention and by the, the vigor and the, and the quality and the audacity. And these are things that, in certain pieces, appear not to fade over time. They still strike you as new. They still speak to you with an urgent present concern. This is a remarkable thing. On the other hand, there are certain contemporary works that sound old because they are primarily concerned with aping things that have already been done. In other words, taking elements of, of historical musics and basically reconfiguring them with a minimal degree of invention. These works are unfortunately born old, much like certain people. I would propose that an interesting way to conceive of contemporary music would be to think of it as being the research and development arm of the music world, essentially. So you want to look at it as being something that is on the vanguard. This is an, an area in which new ideas and concepts and aesthetics are being tested and tried out. And so what the audience gets to do is go along with that ride. So you have to simply be willing to put aside momentarily the notion of whether or not this is a great work and look at it from that angle. Look at it as though it were a potential surprise and as though one way or another you're going to be hearing something new. Here's a second point. I'm absolutely not saying that one should put aside critical judgment when one listens to contemporary music. So one, one point that seems to have been misunderstood somewhat in my video was I said that you need to make contemporary music an urgent concern. In other words, it's something that is necessarily going to be relevant to you because it is recent and because it's being created during the present day. That's not the same thing as saying that you need to like all of it or that you need to find it to be uh, important or of value. That's absolutely not what I'm saying at all. I'm simply saying that the, the attitude to bring to it is that this is something that exists. It's, it's an important thing that it exists and we absolutely need this category. If it did not exist, if the musical repertory were simply finished and we were left with nothing but a museum of dead objects, then as far as I'm concerned, those objects would die very quickly because one of the ways that we interact with older works of art is we're constantly reevaluating them and, and artists respond to them creatively as well. And in so doing, we listen to them differently. We hear 
Palestrina differently because of Bach, who came afterwards, right? And so the the works that are being created today, like it or not, are going to condition the way we listen to and appreciate works that are older. One thing that is certainly very challenging is that if you're listening to a piece of music that is really radically new for the first time, then it's going to be difficult for you to relate it to something that is already in your experience, unless you happen to have a very broad knowledge of what's going on in the world of music today. So I think that it's easy to mistake the discomfort that can occur when you're being confronted with something radically new with a sensation that the work itself is creating this discomfort and that there is therefore something wrong with it or that you are unable to enjoy it. Whereas I think it would be more accurate to say that if you can suspend judgment, if you can approach the thing with an open mind and possibly be just intrigued enough by it to want to hear it a second time at some point, then you are much likelier to be able to get into its mysteries and to appreciate it. Uh, a single hearing usually is not enough. So it's true that on one level, if you want to interact with and engage with contemporary music in a meaningful way, in a way that allows you to actually understand what the pieces are attempting to do, it's more work than it is to approach a piece that's already been thoroughly polished and varnished across the centuries, that has been recorded hundreds of times and performed thousands of times, and that is already an acknowledged masterpiece. In a certain sense, that's an easier way out, and it requires more effort to interact creatively and critically with something that is new. But it's worth it, and it will be enormously enriching if you can make this a ritualistic daily part of your life, I guarantee it. So to conclude, view contemporary music as an adventure with a lot of surprises along the way. Don't expect it to be in any way analogous to the experience of listening to tried and tested older works because it's not the same experience. This is a different category of experience altogether. It is one that has a certain degree of danger. It is one that carries risks, but it is one that is absolutely thrilling if you're willing to go along with it. Mm -hmm.